Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new video of Baldur's Gate Three. Saluna, the Moon Goddess. She's everywhere in Baldur's Gate Three, isn't she? She's even more everywhere if you keep a certain member in your team. It can be great fun to play a Saluna cleric. You get a lot of exclusive interactions throughout the game. So in this episode, I'm gonna share my Saluna cleric build. This build is centered around concepts like moon and night and anything about the Saluna. It's an AOE damage mage build that's also good at stealth, utility, and supporting. The core spell it relies on is the level two spell Moonbeam, which deals AOE radiance damage for ten turns as long as you maintain concentration on it. It's a small AOE, but each turn you can use your action to move it. It damages each enemy at least twice. You damage them when you move the AOE onto them. You damage them when they start their turn in the AOE, and you damage them every time they enter the area. You can upcast Moonbeam to increase its damage. I always reserve the highest three spell slots for it. That's usually enough for a day because we usually have three battles in a day at most. You can start using this spell at level four. While concentrating on Moonbeam, we will go stealthy in the shadows. So that the enemies cannot see us and attack us and break our concentration, and when it's necessary, we can move out of the shadows to heal an ally and disappear into the shadows again. We can also choose to give an ally sanctuary. Either of them only take a bonus action, so we can still use our action to move the moonbeam. We can do a lot of things in one turn. I think this fighting style is quite coherent with Saluna's setting. Steering and guiding things from behind the curtain, and attacking with moonlight. So the composition of this build is a little complicated. It has one level of life domain cleric, four levels of circle of the land druid, four levels of illusion wizard, and three levels of thief rogue. The druid class is where we get the spell moonbeam. Well, some of you may already know there is a legendary artifact in the game that grants you this spell. But I don't want to limit every viewer to that single storyline, and I want this build to work in the broader D&D ecosystem, not just the Baldur's Gate three. So here we are gonna get Moonbeam the old-fashioned way, from level three of the Druid class. Actually, many Saluna worshippers do have Druid background, so this is coherent with the story. For the Cleric class, I chose Life Domain. Saluna has three domains: Life, Knowledge, and Twilight. Baldur's Gate Three doesn't limit your domain choice to the ones your deity has, but in classic D&D 5e they do. So since I'm creating a role-playing build, I stuck to that rule. Life Domain Cleric is the most efficient healer you can get. Right from level one, you get the ability Disciple of Life, which makes your healing spells heal additional hit points. And this ability scales only with the spell slot levels, so you don't need to stick to the cleric class to make use of it. The illusion wizard subclass and the thief subclass are both here to enhance our ability to go stealthy. The illusion wizard subclass has the ability improved minor illusion. It allows you to cast the spell minor illusion with a bonus action instead of a standard action. This makes it possible for you to hide in plain sight in battles. Because you can use a bonus action to make the enemies look away and create a huge blind area. With this, you don't need to always stay in the outskirts corners. You can enter stealth mode right beside the enemies. The rogue class allows you to hide, dash, or disengage with a bonus action instead of a standard action, and it gives you expertise in the stealth skill, making you better at hiding. And the thief subclass gives you one more bonus action each turn. With all this, you can do a lot of things in one turn. There is a huge versatility in this build. Okay, now let's talk about the leveling strategy, when to level into each class, and what you can do in different stages of the game. We start this build with the cleric class. When originally allocating ability scores, we give the major bonus to wisdom and bring it to 17, which is the highest possible for now. We will eventually get it to 20. This is to maximize our spell's DC, making it harder for enemies to save against them. Wisdom also makes you better at sensing danger and noticing hidden things, which is valuable when exploring. And it also makes you hard to control by the most powerful control spells in the game. 
Then we give the minor bonus to dexterity and bring it up to 16. It's the ability we need for hiding, and it increases our AC, making us better at dodging attacks. This is also to increase our initiative rolls, so that we can act before most enemies. Then we forego 2 strength to bring charisma to 13, we'll later bring it to 14. This will make us better in conversations. We leave constitution unchanged at 10. Since we are always hiding, we don't need it for survivability or concentration. We also leave intelligence unchanged at 10, so that it doesn't limit the wizard spells we can prepare. For the cleric cantrips, first, we choose Sacred Flame. It's a ranged radiance damage cantrip. This can be our default attack before we get Moonbeam. Then, Guidance. I think it's a must-have for any cleric build. It gives the target a 1d4 bonus to all ability checks, making our exploring and conversations much easier. Then, Light. This cantrip can make an object shine and illuminate the surroundings. It's quite useful when exploring. For the starting cleric spells, we can prepare 4, but we only need 3. First, we choose Healing Word. This allows you to heal someone with a bonus action. It's weaker than other healing spells, but with the bonus from the life domain, it already heals a lot. And you only use a bonus action to cast it. Most healing spells take a standard action. Then we choose Sanctuary. This spell grants the target an almost absolute protection. The affected unit cannot be targeted, which means enemies cannot attack them. But you can still be affected by AoE abilities. This effect lasts until the affected unit harms anyone. And in the one turn after the effect ends, you cannot be cast Sanctuary on again. Then we choose Create or Destroy Water. This can be useful sometimes when exploring. Right at the Cleric level 1, we can choose into the Life Domain and get the ability Disciple of Life to make our healing spells much more efficient. At level 1, the Life Domain also grants you the spell Cure Wounds. This is your domain spell and will always be prepared without consuming a prepare slot. This spell heals more than Healing Word, but it takes a standard action. Life Domain also gives you proficiency in heavy armor. This will be our protection before we can go stealthy. After we can hide, we will stop wearing armor, because they give us a disadvantage in stealth. There are some special armors that don't do this. If you can find one, you can use it for fashion. From level 2 to level 5, we'll be leveling up in the Druid class to get Moonbeam and our first feat ASAP. For the Druid cantrips, first, we choose Poison Spray. It deals the highest damage among all the cantrips, but it's a semi-melee cantrip. This can be useful when enemies get close to you. Then, Produce Flame. This gives you a ranged fire damage option, and it can be used to burn things when exploring. For the Druid starting spells, we can prepare four. First, we choose Long Strider, a must-have for any party. It increases the target's moving distance for the whole day without concentration, as long as the spell is still prepared. And it's a ritual spell, which means if you cast it outside of combat, it doesn't consume your spell slot. Then, Enhance Leap to give your party more freedom when exploring. It's a ritual spell too. Then, Speak with Animals to get information from animals. This is a ritual spell too, and it lasts a whole day without concentration. Then, Goodberry, the most cost-effective healing spell in the early game. It creates 4 berries that each heal 1d4 hit points. You can use this at the beginning of the day and allocate them among the team. These berries can also be used as camp supplies. At level 3, we choose into the Circle of the Land subclass. This is the best druid subclass for spellcasting. You get the ability Natural Recovery. It gives you the ability to recover spell slots outside of combat. You can recover a combined level that is less than or equal to half your druid level, rounded up. At level 4, we get our core spell Moonbeam. Now we can start dealing AoE Radiance damage. At this level, we also learn the spell Lesser Restoration. It can cure a creature from the conditions of diseased, poisoned, paralysis, or blinded. At this level, Circle of the Land get to choose a land type for extra spells. I recommend Coast or Underdark for the spell Misty Step. 
It is useful both inside and outside of combat by teleporting for quite a distance. At level 5, we get our first feat. Here, we choose Ability Improvement to raise our Wisdom to 18 and our Charisma to 14, getting another plus 1 modifier for both of them. From level 6 to level 8, we'll be leveling up in the Rogue class to get the ability to go stealthy. At level 6, we get the Rogue class and get expertise in two skills that you are proficient in. This makes you double your proficiency bonus for them. We choose Stealth, of course, to become really good at hiding. This level is where I stop wearing armor, because now I constantly go hiding and most armors give you a disadvantage in stealth. At level 7, we get the ability to hide, dash, or disengage with a bonus action. Now we can start using the hiding strategy in battles, damaging enemies with Moonbeam while staying unseen. At level 8, we choose into the Thief subclass to get an extra bonus action. Now we can do many more things in one turn. Starting from level 9, we'll stick to the Wizard class. For the Wizard cantrips, we choose 3 utility cantrips. We are not choosing anything offensive because Wizards use intelligence to cast the spells, which this build doesn't have much. First, we choose Mage Hand to manipulate things from a distance. Then, Dancing Lights, another illumination option. Then, Friends, to make better use of our charisma. This gives you an advantage in conversations, making you more likely to influence people. For the starting wizard spells, first we choose Shield. It's a must-have for any wizard build. It's a reaction that gives you another 5 AC when you need it, making you harder to be hit. This is the spell we'll prepare at this level. Remember to untoggle your opportunity attack in case you waste your reaction on that and can't cast your protection reactions. Then, find Familiar. This allows you to summon a creature into your party to help with combat and exploring. Once summoned, they'll be there until their hit points get reduced to zero. It's a ritual spell, and summon spells don't need to stay prepared once the creature is summoned. Then, Featherfall. Enhanced Leap and Featherfall combined give your party even more freedom when exploring the map. Then, Disguise Self, which allows you to assume a false identity, this is useful in places where a certain race has benefits. Then, Mage Armor, a must-have for any wizard who doesn't wear armor. It sets your AC to 13, which is already higher than most light armors. You only need to cast it once each day and it doesn't require concentration. But, this spell is not for now, because we don't have the slot to prepare it yet. We can use it starting from the next level. Then, Force Life. This spell gives you some temporary hit points. This effect lasts a whole day as long as you don't take damage and lose some of those hit points. So you only need to cast it at the beginning of the day. But again, this is for later, we don't have the slot to prepare it yet. Wizard class also gives the ability Arcane Recovery. It's the equivalent of Circle of the Land Druid's recovery ability. You can recover a combined level that is less than or equal to half your wizard level, rounded up. At level 10, we get to choose into the Illusion School and get the ability Improved Minor Illusion. Now we become even better at hiding. At level 11, we can learn the spell See Invisibility. This is one of the best abilities of a wizard. It lasts a whole day and doesn't need concentration. I also recommend learning Knock. This spell can unlock any lock, no matter its difficulty class, unless the story forbids it. At level 12, we can choose our second feat. Here, we choose Ability Improvement and raise our Wisdom to 20, the cap, maximizing our spellcasting ability. At this level, we also finally get the luxury to prepare Force Life. Okay, we have talked about how good this build is, now let's talk about its weaknesses. The most obvious weakness is Moonbeam is really a small AoE. Most of the time you can only cover two enemies at most. But for a movable AoE damage spell that you can start using at level 4, you can't ask for too much. Another weakness is Moonbeam damages everyone it touches, including you and your allies. So you need to move your units carefully, and you can't use it to save an ally surrounded by enemies. And then, maybe this one is not Bill's weakness, but ours. It's that the movement animation when hiding is just really slow. 
If you can't bear this, maybe don't play a stealth build. And finally, this build develops a little slow, thanks to the complicated composition. The whole strategy only starts to come into shape at early mid game, and you only get your second feat at far late game when you reach the level 12 cap. That's much slower than most builds. But again, this build is all about roleplay in the first place. Let's have fun with that. <laughs> and that is everything about this Lunar Cleric build. Hope you like it. And if you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.